As we begin this morning for our time of worship, let us center our hearts, calm our thoughts, as we bring in the light of Christ. Good morning, Easter people. It is so good to be in worship with you once again. A beautiful day. This is the Lord that the this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So glad that you are tuning in with us on this third Sunday of Easter. Uh, it is so good to be worshiping God uh, in these days. Will you join me in the words of gathering? Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us sing. The peace of Christ be with you, and also with you. Will you join me in the call to worship? As you walk with us, as we journey together, Lord, your word fills our hearts. As you speak with us, as your love is revealed, Lord, your fire burns in our hearts. As we proclaim what we have seen and heard, may all people be drawn to you, the risen Lord. Let us sing our opening hymn. Now the green blade riseth from the buried grain, wheat that in the dark earth many days had lain. Love lives again, that with the dead has been. Love has come again, like wheat that springeth green. In the grave they laid him, love had been slain, thinking that he never would awake again, laid in the earth like grain that slept unseen, 
Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. For he came at Easter like the risen grain. Jesus, who for three days in the grave had lain, quick from the dead, my risen Lord is seen. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. When our hearts are in tree, grieving or in pain, Jesus' touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been. Love is come again like wheat that springeth green. Almighty God, Jesus, our risen Lord, was made known to the disciples in the breaking of the bread. Open the eyes of our hearts that we may recognize his presence and with his disciples cry, The Lord has risen indeed. Through Christ who lives and reigns with you in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come together in song as we pray. Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. As we come this morning in this time of prayer, I thank you for those who have sent in a prayer request. They have been now included in our weekly a bulletin, an email that we send out to you. If you are interested in receiving a bulletin and you are not receiving it, you may contact our office. If you are interested in including a prayer for the church to know, or for me as your pastor to know, you may email me at pastorkevin at bayviewumc.org. Let us be in prayer. God of resurrection, let us unite our part in prayer. As we pray for the church throughout the world, that as we celebrate the great 50 days of Easter, we may renew our faith and strengthen our witness. We pray for pastors, teachers, ministers, our bishop, that they may recognize the risen Christ and word and sacrament and lead your church with wisdom, humility, and courage. We pray for our governments of the world and its leaders, that they may resist the corruption of sin and serve the common good. We pray for our planet Earth, that all people may be good stewards of its resources and share in its abundance. We pray for the poor and the stranger, that they may receive a place of refuge and hope that the church may offer the hospitality the first disciple offered to Jesus on the road to Emmaus. We pray for the sick and those in distress, that they may find healing for their pain and be restored to fullness of life. We pray for our neighbors, that we may live together in peace and share in our resources. We pray for our enemies, that they may receive good things, that we, your servants, not return evil for evil. Almighty God, receive these prayers we offer, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us witnesses to the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ, through whom we pray. Bless us these days, these days of uncertainty, these days as we continue living in isolation. Continue to pour your blessings, your spirit upon our lives and our world, that we may truly find healing, 
that we may find answers to prayers, answers to the questions we bring, answers for the scientists and the doctors who are working hard behind the scenes trying to move us forward into safety and wholeness. We offer all of these our prayers in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be by thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. You'll find in the bulletin some suggested readings. And today's reading is from Act 2, 14 and 36 through 41. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you've crucified. Now that they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day, about 3,000 persons were added. Today's sermon is entitled, The Easter Crisis of 2020. We'll be exploring the scripture of Acts chapter 2 this morning. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation upon all our hearts be pleasing and acceptable unto you, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Easter was a crisis. Do you agree with this statement? How would Easter ever become a crisis, you might be thinking? Did we forget to put out our Easter basket for the Easter bunny to hide? Did we already eat our chocolates and we want more? Did we burn the Easter ham? Did we watch an Easter service? in our pajamas? Did the pastor urge us to turn to Facebook or YouTube during church to engage in worship service? Wait, what? Well, maybe one of these statements hits home for you. Maybe more than one of these statements fits your situation. The crisis of Easter could be these things, of course, but it also might be the reality of isolation, feeling alone, boxed in at home, getting frustrated with your hair so you decide to clip it off. COVID-19 is our crisis. It took us through the season of Lent, Holy Week, Easter, and now already the third Sunday of Easter we are likely to worship this way until the season of Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. Yet what if I were to say 2020 is not the first Easter crisis? Of course, we remember the crisis of the first Easter when the women found the tomb empty. That caused much panic and fear, uncertainty. But Jesus appears to Mary then the ten disciples, then to Thomas with the remaining disciples, then appears to hundreds of witnesses. And if you were to read today's gospel passage, it would be the road to Emmaus, where Jesus was not recognized until the breaking of the bread around the table. 
So we know there was a crisis this year during Easter. There was a crisis the first Easter. So there must have been another crisis at some point in history. And after some research, I found this, the crisis of 1920, exactly 100 years ago. Easter was a crisis. Exactly 100 years ago, Denmark, the country, experienced the Easter crisis of 1920. The king and the cabinet had a conflict that escalated into a constitutional crisis, leading to the development of a constitutional monarch of Denmark. To a constitutional monarchy of Denmark. Easter was also a rising. In Ireland, the Easter Rising of 1916 was a bloody milestone in the struggle between the Irish and the British. Beginning on Easter Monday, thousands of Irish men and women seized locations in Dublin and proclaimed an Irish Republic. The British Army responded with force, leading to fierce street fighting and heavy casualties. Almost 500 people died and 2,600 were wounded. After six days, the British Army suppressed the Easter Rising. Thousands of people were taken prisoner and most leaders of the movement were executed. But Britain's reaction to the Easter Rising was not popular. Public opinion began to shift and the result was that Ireland moved steadily towards independence. On the centennial of the Easter Rising, Netflix offered a mini-series called Rebellion, a drama in which lover is pitted against lover, friend against friend, and brother against brother. One of the creators of the series said that there was a huge appetite for people wanting to learn more of this time. So Easter was both a rising and a crisis. But not everyone today knows about the Easter Rising of 1916, and very few people have heard of the Easter Crisis of 1920. To me, both are new learnings. But do not worry, my friends, this is not a history class. This is worship. We come together to rejoice in the name of the resurrected Christ. So do you remember the original Easter Crisis and how people responded? Doors were locked, fear was felt, and many were silent in bringing up the name of Jesus. That is, until 50 days later, after the empty tomb. 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Pentecost, the promised advocate known as the Holy Spirit, shows up with the gusty wind and the flames of fire empowering all to speak in different languages, yet understanding one another. Doors burst open, no longer in fear. Peter carries the Easter message and now begins to preach the power of Christ to both Jew and Gentile. Bob Kaler writes of this event in these words, Standing in the streets of Jerusalem, the apostle Peter raised his voice and boldly addressed the people of Jerusalem. Peter's speech is the first public disclosure of Jesus' resurrection, says New Testament professor Robert Tenahill. This message is a shock to the people of Jerusalem. Yes, a shock. The rising is a shock. Peter spoke about Jesus of Nazareth and accused the Israelites of crucifying and killing him. But God raised him up, he said, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in death's power. Kaler continues, The resurrection was a rebellion, a successful revolt against the oppressive powers of death itself. This Jesus God raised up, proclaimed Peter, and of all that, all of us are now witnesses. And having conquered death, Jesus now sits at the right hand of God in heaven, Therefore, let the entire house of Israel, Peter says, know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. What seemed to be a crisis 
was actually beginning to quickly become a rising into a new movement of history that would forever change our world. For me, there is great power in this statement that Peter makes. Let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made Jesus both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you have crucified. Now there is no second guessing here about the resurrection. It is made known to us in certainty that Jesus has been raised from the dead and is Lord and is Messiah. We are told that the people who heard this message were cut to the heart. The truth hurt them because they were accused of killing Jesus. Now let's stop there real quick. Over the centuries, this rhetoric of them killing Jesus has caused much hatred towards the Jewish people. Hitler himself, a self-avowed Christian, aimed his movement towards the Jewish people and others with such passages of scripture. While Peter was maybe addressing some of those who might have been at the crucifixion of Jesus, maybe those who saw the nails pierce the hands and feet of Jesus and the spear pierce the side of Jesus, everyone is to be included in the killing of Jesus. The human condition of sin killed Jesus. No one was exempt from this. Jesus took it all to the cross. So it hits the crowd that day in a new way. They are convicted by this message. The power of the resurrection was starting to converge from crisis into new rising of a new day. Hearts were cut with conviction that Jesus never deserved to die, and yet he died. So the reply is, what should we do? What can we do? How can we fix this? How do we wash our hands of this whole ordeal of crime? Peter says it's twofold. Repent and be baptized. The reward of this is that your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is the shift in our passage this morning. Peter preached and hearts were changed. The good news is not only proclaimed, but it is received with openness by the crowd that day. The crisis was now turning into this rise of a new movement of history. The promise is offered to be remembered forever. If you repent and become baptized, the Holy Spirit is here for you. This is not just for a select people either. This promise, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, was for all people, no longer holding back for the chosen people or a select few now. Those who executed Jesus, those who sent him to the cross, the ones who nailed him to the cross, the one who pierced him in the side, the promise is there for them too. Or shall I say, the promise is there especially for them. Hear this good news, my friends, of Peter in the name of the gospel. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls. No longer is God for one nation. No longer is God for a select group or a people. God is the God of all people. God is the God of all creation. They can be nearby and they can be people far away. I add to the interpretation that they can be like-minded to your thinking or they might be far away in their thinking from you. God says this is perfectly okay because I am the God of all thoughts and all ways. God covers the world and all of creation in grace. And in this promise of forgiveness of sins and the receiving of the Holy Spirit, it was like the crisis of humanity was now ended. The promise was received to receive new life. The God of love calls us to new life, to new beginnings, to new hope, to step forward in faith. The God of love is the God of life. This promise is for everyone, no exceptions. 
This is the good news of Jesus Christ. This is the good news of the Easter resurrection. Carolyn Lewis writes, The Spirit's arrival confirms that the resurrection was never a correction or a validation of a plan gone wrong. That the resurrection, and the crucifixion for that matter, was integral, essential, and inherent to God's end-of-the-earth mission of love is perhaps a harder pill to swallow than if we had simply to look over or make excuses for a botched mission. The truth is, the church needs regular reminders of its identity. And maybe we're finding ourselves walking this journey right now that we're finding a new way to find our identity. Who are we as God's people? Have we forgotten? And now this occurs, this crisis, and so God has empowered us to move forward to find out who are you? Who is the church of Jesus Christ today? We are people of life and not death. We are people of rising and not crisis. We are people of Easter, of the church, and not people of Easter of the world. We are people who celebrate Jesus as Lord and Messiah. So what does that exactly mean? Well, at least for me, Jesus as Lord means that there is nothing greater or more important than God through Jesus Christ. Now remember, this was a time in Jesus' day, in the days of the early church, where so many were calling Caesar Lord. The Roman Empire's was their Lord. But if Jesus is our Lord, then Caesar is not. If Jesus is our Lord, nothing is higher or more powerful than Jesus. Now, I am willing and fully wanting to offer my whole being towards living for Jesus. Nothing will stand in my way of praising Jesus. Nothing will prevent me from worshiping God. Not even COVID-19 can stop the church from celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And COVID-19 cannot stop us from celebrating the Pentecost event of the receiving of the Holy Spirit. Never forget this message, my friends. This is the good news, and I'm so excited about this COVID-19 has not stopped the church. COVID-19, if anything, has grown the church to farther places than ever before. This promise is forever. So do we choose crisis or do we choose a rising? I choose a rising of a new day, of a new dawn, in the name of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. In his book, Lament for a Son, Christian theologian Nicholas Wolterstorff comments on his life after his 25-year-old son's sudden death in a mountain climbing accident. It's a classic description of a personal crisis. The world looks different now. Something is over. In the deepest levels of my existence, something is finished, done. My life is divided into before and after. Now, when I read this statement, I thought about how many are most likely feeling this statement today through our period of pandemic. Something is over. We can never return to days prior to COVID-19. I fear that they have forever changed human history. We now get to choose how we will live into this history of humanity. The life, our world, is divided into before COVID-19 and after COVID-19. Crisis or rising. Will this destroy humanity or will it make humanity ever stronger than before? Again, I feel like we get to choose. Just like those who were alive during the crucifixion of Jesus and 50 days later were cut to the heart, we are those people today. 
We live Easter resurrection, and we have lived this way of life for thousands of years. Yet have we forgotten the power of the resurrection? So we have to revisit it today. What is the resurrection? Why was it so important when the women found the tomb empty? Why is resurrection so important for us today? How do we live the resurrection promise into the future? Now, I could answer these questions for you and I, but these are questions of faith. They take time to answer. The way we answer them will form our identity as a people of God. You alone and I alone can answer depending how we interpret our worldview. However, as Easter people, I can offer the suggestion of reflection. We today live the Easter promise through our baptisms. After all, Peter did say we must repent and be baptized. So live your baptism vows and we will find promise and life. Carolyn Lewis again says, It is in this new perspective of life over death, of gain in the midst of loss, of breath when loss seems to have the most power, that baptism is best understood. Baptism signals this change of perception. It signals a commitment to viewing the world and being in the world in a way that anticipates victory over death. Baptism represents this alternative way of seeing things. As a result, baptism should also function as a claim on our purpose. Baptism cannot be reduced to a one-time event any more than the resurrection can be left behind in the history books of the church. Lewis continues, Baptism propels us forward into the larger mission of witnessing to the ends of the earth. Before we were baptized, God loved us and surrounded us in grace and called us God's child. Before we or our families understood the commitment of baptism and living out our faith, God loved us and surrounded us in grace and called us God's child. In our baptism, we gave up our old self, lost the sting of death, took on a new life in Christ, and the church claimed us as God's child. We still live the baptism vows of turning away from the evil forces of wickedness, injustices, oppression, willing to serve forever Christ our Lord to all people of the whole world with no exceptions. Just like Easter, our baptism continues onward. Our scripture this morning I urge to us to turn to is from 1 Peter 1.22 because it reminds us to return to God's truth that moves us towards love for all. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. Or as Eugene Peterson interprets it in the message, now that you've cleaned up your lives by following the truth, Love one another as if your lives depended upon it. While we live into this crisis of 2020, let us remember always the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins, and the power and the gift of the Holy Spirit. This will, I believe, be enough always to move us out of any crisis and into a new rising of a new hope. Celebrate these ways of God and let us rejoice. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now respond in song. is alive let Christians sing his cross stands empty to the sky let streets and homes with praises ring his love in death shall never die 
Christ is alive, no longer bound to distant years in Palestine. He comes to claim the here and now and dwell in every place and time. Not thrown afar, remotely high, untouched, unmoved by human pains, but daily in the midst of life, our Savior in the Godhead reigns. In every insult, rift, and war, where color, scorn, or wealth divide, he suffers still, yet loves the more, and lives though ever crucified. Christ is As we prepare to remember this sacred act of worship in receiving the offering, bountiful are God's gifts to us. In gratitude, let us offer our hearts and the fruit of our labor to God's service. As your pastor, I thank you so much for your ways of giving beyond all expectations. We, together as the church, continue to move forward in transforming lives of the people in our congregation and the people in our community, and yes, even to the people around the world, as we continue to uphold each other in prayer, as we continue to have social gatherings through social media, we continue to uphold one another in new ways and our gifts make this all possible so thank you thank you thank you thank you you are a blessing and never forget this let us give our gifts <laughs> pray with me the dedication gift prayer almighty god by your grace accept the fruit of our labor and the offering of our lives let us be a sacrifice of thanksgiving and union with our risen lord who lives and reigns with you forever amen receive this sending forth go in the joy of resurrection we go with our eyes open and our hearts burning within us ready to share the good news of Jesus Christ. So may we find our hearts strangely warm this morning because the Holy Spirit is active in our lives and in our world. The Holy Spirit is not yet done with us as the people of God. Go forth now with the blessings of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit now and forever and be blessed this day forever. Amen. God 
I know. 